Peace, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of My Quality Is For Real. I am your lovely host here, Queen My Quality. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. It's been a minute since we kicked it and we chilled, y'all. It is 2022. Can y'all believe it? It's 2022. We made it. We here. We made it. It's been a rough past two years, y'all, but we made it. Um, I wrapped up the last season of My Quality Is For Real around September, and I've been on a little hiatus, if you will, from the show uh, for the past couple of months, just trying to, you know, recoup and get myself together and prepare for this new year. But I am back with the jump off, and I am here to have more quality talks, real quality talks with quality people who have real purpose. Um, if you are familiar with the show, then you know the progress that it has taken, um, the journey of it has taken, and it's definitely come a long way. Shout out, shout out to everybody who has had a hand in helping it uh, become what it is. It started off as a podcast, My Quality, uh, no, Michaela is for real, that was the name of the podcast. And so, like I said, it has grown and it's taken a life of its own and now it is My Quality is for real. And I want to focus more on it becoming an actual show. Y'all, you know, shout out to all of my podcasters out there. I love them. I watch podcasts all day. Um, but I just realized that, you know, that that's not really my lane and what I want to do. I want to have a variety show, if you will. Um, you know, something like the kind of show that Trevor Noah has, you know what I'm saying, with the Daily Show or, you know, the... Um, you know, just something different. That That's what I'm aiming towards. So you definitely will get the interviews. You will see the interviews, but you will also get a different side of me. You'll be able to see my acting. I am an actor. I'm going to share that side of me with you all, and I'm also going to share my journey. As some of you may know that I have recently, well, it's been a year and some change. I have been living in New York City, the Big Apple. So I'm going to share you, I'm going to allow you all to, you know, share that journey with me as well. And, you know, just some different little things. Again, I want to make it a variety show. I definitely want it to be, you know, more than just a podcast. And again, I love my podcast, but this is just what I want to do with the show. So you all are in for a real treat. Be sure to like and subscribe to Queen My Quality on YouTube. Um, you're going to check out the segment My Quality in the City. Also, I have Think About It Thursdays, and I may be dropping so you know, some more. You know, you're going to get your Black History Facts, you know. Um, also, you're going to get your Did You Know. You know, this is educational, if you will, but also entertaining and, you know, yeah, I'm like hilarious as well. So you're going to laugh and you're going to enjoy it. Well, at least I hope you all enjoy it. And if not, then this isn't the show for you. But if it is, like I said, be sure to like and subscribe to Queen My Quality on YouTube. Also, you can check out www.myqualityisforreal.com. You can also find me on um, Facebook and Instagram at My Quality Is For Real. So yeah, stay tuned. Again, I have a wonderful show lined up for y'all. Um, you're in for a treat. Stick around. Peace. Did you know that Sanitary Pads was developed by a black woman named Mary Beatrice Davidson? Born May 17th, 1912, and returned to the Essence January 13th, 2006. Until sanitary pads were created, women used all kinds of reusable fabrics to observe menstrual flows. Mary's invention was initially rejected because of racial discrimination. The world had no choice. Her invention was too important to be ignored. It was later accepted in 1956, 30 years later. Another one of her inventions is the bathroom tissue holder, which she co-invented with her sister. Did you know that? Well. Now you do. Peace. Did you know that? All right, peace, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of My Quality Is For Real. I am your lovely host here, Queen My Quality. I have another dope person interviewing today, Mr. Enrico. Uh, uh, Mr. Enrico. <laughs> <laughs> He is uh, a man who wears many hats, actually. He's an um, entrepreneur, vlogger. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and kind of tell a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to get into it. All right. Uh, my name's Enrico. Uh, you can see me on uh, social media under Enrico Flamingo. 
Uh, but yes, uh, a vlogger on YouTube. Uh, I own uh, a couple of businesses. Um, one is a, a notary public in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, as a photographer as well. Okay. And so you, but you're originally from Cleveland. So what made you take the step to move from Cleveland to Arizona? Growth and opportunity. Uh, so my mother and uh, several friends lived out this way. And I came out here to visit. My mother was like in and out of the hospital. So um, I was the only one with like a flexible enough schedule to uh, be able to come out and check on her. And after visiting like two, three times, I looked around and I was like, uh, I think I can do this. <laughs> like, like, this might be for me. <laughs> so uh, I decided to say I went back to Cleveland. I sold my house and then uh, I flew out here, made a couple of connections. And I've been here ever since. And that was in 2017. 2017. Wow. You sustained and maintained since then. I have. I have. That's so, that's, help. That's so, <laughs> so yeah, the, entre the entrepreneur bug, is that something that you've seen growing up? Or is that something that, how did you get into that world? Well, actually, I did see it growing up. I didn't even really think uh, of that. But so my mother, um, she's always been the type of person to at least try, like, you know, go out on a limb. So um, I've seen her, she had a, you know, a daycare business, um, a, a glass, a, a decorative glass business. One day she woke up and she was like, I'm tired of going to work. And uh, she <laughs> went and bought like uh, a bunch of glassware and she just started hand painting them. And she made something out of that. I mean, she turned a profit and to see that, to see her go to craft shows and farmers markets and set up a table and you know do that and I was what you know maybe uh no I was I was an adult at the time when she was doing that so but to, to see that example and the only example I had from everyone else is to wake up and you know wake up at nine you know work till five you know so exactly I was just about to say that, uh, I was just about to say that um uh, my story is complete opposite so my parents they are die hard get them get a good job you get a trade, you get a good job. There's no, you know, there's never been a push to be an entrepreneur. It wasn't until I started to get into the work field. And I'm like, mm, this is not, I don't, I don't want to do this for 20, 30 years. Like, this is yeah, I want to settle it. I don't want to settle here. So that's why I like to ask that question because a lot of times, I think it's dope to have come from something like that, to have seen that example. You know, a lot of us, we just, you know, just guided just by, you know, seeing people like you or meeting different people and like, oh, so you work for yourself. Oh, okay. How is that? You know, um, but you have you ever you've been in the corporate world? Oh, that's actually, well, I want to say like 80% of my resume, because that's okay. how I started until I realized the other gifts that I had. So um, I have a background and well, military. So um, after graduating high school, I went to the army, I served in Iraq, and uh, while being there, you know, I saw all kinds of alternative lifestyles. I heard about where everybody was from. And that gave me like a travel bug that made me want to see where everybody was from. Mm. You know, you get to meeting, you know, people from, I've met people what, from, you know, each corner of the earth. And everyone has a story, like a love story about where they're from. And it just makes you want to, you know, check it out. But more into my professional background, after I got out of the military, I followed uh, like a sales path. It was the easiest way to like make significant money. Mm. But the problem with sales is each month you're starting over, no matter how good you are, no matter how much you sold for this company, it's always, what have you done for me lately? You can't rest on your laurels. So, mm. uh, and you're always at the mercy of the consumer, you know, so don't expect to get any Black Friday, Christmas, any of that, you know, <laughs> yeah. any of that off. You're going to be on the plantation. I've tried my hand in sales. That's not, not for me. <laughs> you know, not I, for I me. Why it works for me. Not for, to cut, sorry to cut oh, you off, but not to cut you off. But now that I think about it, I think now looking back, those jobs did prepare me because technically, if you're wanting to be an entrepreneur, I guess you have, you would have to be in sales you got to sell yourself you got to sell your brand yes. and yes. that that is where I am um not too well versed in I, I'm still learning how, <laughs> how to do that 
I say you do a good job at it. I mean, you got several episodes up here. You're selling yourself pretty well, you know. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) But in the the corporate sales world, man, you'll have to talk highly of a product that you don't care about. I mean, they say, hey, sell this lighter. I don't don't really care about this lighter, you know. (laughs) But give me something that, you know, I am passionate about Mm -hmm. and I can sell it all day because I'm telling the truth and speaking from my spirit, you know. Yeah. And I think that that now that you say that, that is kind of my why I didn't really, you know, go far in it, because I when I was in sales, I did like, you know, how they had the people set up at Sam's and Walmart and you say, hey, what 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 uh, cable, you know, provider do you have? You know, and I would get in trouble because once they say no, I'm like, oh, OK, like, no, you can't just take that one. No, I'm not in the business of convincing somebody to do something they don't want to do. Like, <laughs> I think and that that's. <laughs> I think that that's that's where it is. Like I'm not I'm not trying to convince you if you don't want to do it. You know, you don't got to do it. But yeah, you have to have a a, a gift and a passion for yeah. that. Yes, most definitely. Uh, I think my I don't have a passion for sales so much as I have a passion for people. Mm. You know, and a, and a passion for a purpose. So once I tap into that bag, I can talk all day. You know, and then just suggest a product at the end. You know, so yeah. uh, going up and talking to strangers isn't a problem for me. You know, opening a conversation and just speaking to what people like and ask people about themselves. They will tell you. People like talking about themselves. Ask they them do. about themselves. They will tell you everything. And then <laughs> I just take whatever you told me and I match it to a product. Well, you say that you like to uh, schedule your day. We have these planners we're selling, you know, bada bing, bada boom. Okay. You can get two for this price, you know, and that worked for a while, but it stressed me out because there was no end goal. Mm. There was, there's, there's no end to that. At the end of the, the, the sales month, they're like, all right, our, our next uh, target goals are X, Y, and Z. Like, hey, man, you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I got a, a lot of sales experience working at Verizon and there it, it was like their sales goals were almost how do you say it, it's just far too exaggerated like mm. like over ambitious to a degree mm. and uh, they'll tell you like okay this week we're selling this amount I'm like well last year you know around this time this happens people aren't buying after Christmas because they spent all their money during Christmas, but yeah. <laughs> yeah like, so you want me to sell what? And then they're following you around. So did you sell this today? Did mm-hmm. you sell that? How about now? Did you sell it now? <laughs> I just got off lunch, bro. No, I didn't sell any of that, you know? So I had to find something that I was passionate about. Uh, coming out here to Arizona, I had got into tech. Um, and that worked for a while until I realized that I'm a terrible employee. (laughs) (laughs) After a while, I had to stop uh, blaming jobs and take into account that, A, I really am not interested in what the job is. I'm not passionate about it. So to force myself to get up at the crack of dawn every morning, you know, force feed yourself, hurry up, brush your teeth, and fight through traffic, you get to a building, you're sitting in a cubicle, and then you're blah, 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 right. and that day in and day out, only for the reward of maybe uh, two weeks off a year, and uh, oh, yeah, and we also had this, like, none of that was worth it for me. Right. You know, um, I tell people, I, I want to live for a living. Hmm. You know, so when people ask me, like, oh, so what do you do? What do I do? I, I wake up and I give my best effort towards life every day, you know? That's so. Uh, yeah. Speaking of life, so you, uh, how did you get into the lifestyle vlogging? You also have a that, YouTube page. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I can. That's what I'm passionate about. <laughs> so coming out here to uh, Arizona, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, Midwest city kid. Um, everything is, everything kind of is the same every day, you know, Mm -hmm. you get used to the bad weather, you get used to, I I love where I'm from, but the people can be a a, a bit aggressive, like all day long, you know, (laughs) you're never able to let your guard down. 
Um, as far as traveling, my family, we only really left for like family reunions once in a while and maybe like Georgia, you know, Boston, you know, mm-hmm. just depending on what side of the family, you know, we are not really going far. And once I had joined the, uh, the military, I saw what was possible. You know, you go to different states, you, you know, you're picking up on different customs, different food from different areas. And when I would talk to people after joining the military and they would tell me that's the type of stuff that they wanted to do, I realized that it wasn't really that hard. Like someone would tell me, oh man, I really want to go to uh, Orlando and, and try, a, a, you know, or Florida and try a Cubano sandwich. And I'm like, you know, all you have to do is book a flight. You know, you can go down there, you know, Airbnb exists now, just rent a room, go there, find the place, have it, enjoy it. And I realized that that wasn't possible because everybody believes that they have to take on the the format of wake up every day, go to work and do this. Like if you save some of this money and you put it aside and put it towards something that pays you right now versus having to wait every two weeks mm-hmm. you could possibly afford to go xyz and do whatever you want to do right and uh, the fear of stepping outside of that nine to five box crushes a lot of dreams and i had already done it a couple of times before so it was like why not do it again you know right. let's, let's see what i can do so the vlogging uh, that was, that came at the recommendation of a couple of friends. My friend Elijah Frazier, uh, he runs a company called Royal Lamb, and that's kind of what he does is help people come up with a plan to follow their dreams. Hmm. And then also my friends who are out here, uh, E. Ray the Hipster, he uh, speaks on uh, an Audible Ruckus podcast, but you know, they were kind of giving me the encouragement to like, hey, you know, all these places you're going, all these things that you're doing, you know, why not show that to the world? And I said, well, why not? You know, because mm-hmm. before I was only doing it for me, but to get rich, you have to help others, honestly. You have to make yourself available to others. So that is what brought that about. And once I saw what was possible, I mean, we're carrying cameras around all day with our phones. Right. It's easy to record. You just got to learn some editing techniques and you're in there. Yeah, people are making whole movies yes, from their phones I now. Own movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that's dope. And to kind of piggyback off of what you said about, you know, people being comfortable and getting into this nine to five space. Like I said, when I first came here to New York, that kind of was my goal. But I had been so used to being in the nine to five that I started to feel like a little depressed. Like, Hey, you know, I, I need to, I need to get back to working. You need to get back into that comfort zone because you you know I know I got a guaranteed check every two weeks. I know I got you know this insurance. You know you get into this comfortable space, but then once you get there, it's like, like I can't wait to not be here. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's it's a it's a rat race. Start really. counting down the hours. Like I only got four 15 minutes to go (laughs) (laughs) try to break it down in your head like that exactly little do you know like I mean no man knows the day nor the hour when you're out of here for good so Mm. I say you know get busy living you know get to it you know instead of having a retirement plan have a right now plan Mm. You know, that's, you, you, you're dropping some jewels here. You say you, know, you, you live for a living. I think that's dope. I've heard, I've heard somebody say that before, and it took me. I'm like, hmm, I mean, we all living, but no, like, some of us are not living. You're just existing. Exist. You're existing. Exactly. You're not living. And that's, that's a horrible space to be in. Yeah. I think one of the hardest times of my life was being at a job and not being able to see, like, a way out of it because... It was like, what else am I going to do? So that was that helped encourage me to come to Arizona. When I lived in Cleveland, I had a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. I had two vehicles. I had uh, bills out the wazoo. But all of these things I had saw, you know, my parents do, my father do, you know. And that's the only way I truly knew how to live. And mm-hmm. 
I still had the desire to get up and move about. So I was trying to think about ways to rent out my house and maybe try to work around what I had and keep everything that I had and still be able to do these things, but it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and one day I just got tired. <laughs> and uh, I kind of subscribed to minimalism, which is more so keeping things that are of value instead of just having bunches of meaningless items. Mm. I, I sold anything that I couldn't use immediately. I uh, put the money in my savings and I moved. <laughs> and, uh, I, don't I don't regret it at all. Smart. That's dope. That's dope. But you also uh, photography. Can you talk a little yes. bit about that as well? So you, you, you know, you got a lot, a lot going on. A lot going on. Um, All of this stems from the, the my my same purpose of wanting to get out and about and, and move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I got into the photography because it's my it's my plan. It's my intention to live abroad, and I was thinking, you know what skill could I have that could be of service to people so I could make money in another country? And I looked into photography, you know, and one thing leads to another. I buy a camera uh, off Facebook Marketplace from a guy uh, named, he goes by Memphis Kid. And I asked him, I'll say, hey, are there any, you know, photography events or, you know, any guys in the area that are shooting? You know, I just want to be a part of a production. I want to, you know, go out here and practice my skill. And, you know, we exchange numbers. He brings me out to video shoots, X, Y, Z. One morning I'm on a, on a boat, you know, filming a music video. Next minute I'm at some ballet recital, you know, oh, filming wow. shooting that and just learning to edit and things like that. So that was just pretty much my practice ground to hone that skill. So when I am, you know, abroad, I have that skill to take with me. Mm, that's dope and that's smart. <laughs> a lot of us don't a lot of us do not think about that i've thought about living abroad too but I, I didn't you know i didn't think like what what can i be of service to people and that is really what life is about what what can we do for other people you know yeah, what exactly um yeah. so in, in my mind my my perfect lifestyle looks a lot like what was your prior guest name we spoke about him i really enjoyed it that episode but he does the trips to africa todd Ty, I have a hard time pronouncing names, but he goes by Camp Pleasant because he's an artist as well. So he's an artist. Yeah. Shouts out to him. It's a, He also has a podcast now to, to Taye Speaks. Um, oh. Go go look him up. He's definitely, well, you already know, but I'm talking to the people that don't. Um, <laughs> they may not have seen the episode, but yeah, he's really dope. But he does that. He does the whole travel and the whole tours to Africa and just amazing and that's something that we definitely need as a people we need to go back and we need to go you know experience that and not just be here you know when you were talking about traveling I didn't get on the plane until I was 25 you know wow. prior to that as a kid you know I, I, we went a few places but like you said it was only for like a weekend we're going for a graduation or a family reunion um I went to Vegas on my 25th birthday and I was like you know what after that, I was like, you know what, for every year for my birthday, I'm going somewhere. I don't care where it is. I'm going somewhere because I got to see more. You know, I, I've come from a small town and that's all I've seen. Yeah. That's all well, I I'll, do. I'll bail you out right here because you're <laughs> from Texas. Texas is the size of a country. <laughs> so you, if you left Texas, you went somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Even if you're from different parts in Texas. So I'm from I'm, I'm from Cleveland. I live in Phoenix, and it's crazy to me that around Dallas is the halfway point between Phoenix and Cleveland. That's how wow. big Texas is. Yeah, you can be you can be driving for 10, 14 hours and still be in Texas. Yeah. So from here, I drove to Dallas before. It took me fourteen hours, and I was just curious. I looked at the time it took to get to Cleveland from Dallas. It was like fourteen hours. I'm like, this is literally the halfway point. <laughs> it's only what two states over so yeah that, that was wild to me <laughs> yeah shout out to texas shout out to texas man. <laughs> I, mean, I love texas i love dallas man it influenced a, uh a lot of my art you know a lot of my favorite artists are from there you know so shout out to dsr big tuck oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's man big tuck that took me back that took me back to the, the clubbing day. <laughs> no, no, 
<laughs> for the clubbing days. That's what's up. But yeah, I um I didn't get my love for my the state that I'm from. I didn't really pick it up until I moved here. I didn't appreciate it as much until I started meeting people and are you from Texas? Oh, I love Texas. And me being from there, I wanted to get away from there. I'm like, why do y'all keep moving here? Like, what is it about Texas that y'all just want to keep coming here? But, you know, you have to leave home in order to appreciate sometimes where you come from. Now, when I go back, it looks totally different to me. It's oh, like, definitely. It's like, wow, that's been here this whole time? Really? Like, you know, <laughs> every everything just looks so different. Yeah, when you're Smaller. in it, you can't really see it, right? Yeah. So, like, in, in Phoenix, I thought everything was better than Cleveland. Then I get to Phoenix, I'm used to living here. And every time I get hungry, I miss Cleveland because to me, there's no better food scene than in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. Um, that's because it's not a whole lot to do. So the people know how to eat, you know, come from <laughs> I'm seeing in Cleveland. So every time I go home, man, I'm loading up. I'm like, hey, take me here, take me here. Oh, I saw this place, take me there. Yeah, shout <laughs> out to Cleveland. You're like my third person from Cleveland that, I, that I've interviewed. Uh, shout um, out to Hood Honey. I just maybe. had him on here. Shout out to him. And then the guy that you were talking about, he's actually from Cleveland as well. So Shout out. So uh, speaking on Hood Honey, uh, Trey, that uh, Ronnie Williams, that's a really good friend of mine. Um, he had came to me with the concept of Hood Honey. So I got to see it in its early stages. He was like, you know, I really want to I want to do this thing. And he was breaking it down, how he was going to get the bees, the boxes. And I had never heard of a black person saying they wanted to be a beekeeper. You Listen, know, so I was that's like, why oh. I, had, I had to interview him. <laughs> I had to, because I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even think that's, I never even heard anybody as a kid say they wanted to even be that. Like, we didn't even know that that was possible for us to even be that. You know what I'm saying? So Man, that's we what stayed away from so bees dumb. wherever possible. Exactly. <laughs> You know, exactly. growing up, these were like the devil, you know, but, uh, you know, he, he broke it down and how it could be, you know, advantageous to the community. And the more he spoke, I'm like, man, this brother is wise beyond his years, man, you know, so, but it, it falls in line with who he is. He ran a, a, pro, a, a baseball program for the youth growing up, you know, he's already used to being there for the community. So shout out to Hood Honey. Shouts out to him. Shouts out to you. Shouts out to everybody, you know, out there, like I said, walking in their purpose. It's the whole purpose of the show. Um, I have real talks with quality people who have quality purpose, and you're definitely one of them. Thank and you, you right. um, all that you do, I know that you, you know, you want to be modest and, you know, not, not talk about everything. We didn't even, you know, get into everything. But I appreciate you again for coming on. Let the people know where they can find you, uh, if they want to connect with you, what you have coming up next. Um, you know, where they can go see some of your stuff, all of that good stuff. You guys can uh, follow me on uh, Instagram. That's where I put out the majority of my content uh, at Enrico Flamingo. So that's E-N-R-I-C-O and Flamingo spelled the, the correct way. Um, I'm also on Twitter and uh, Facebook under those same names. Uh, also, you can find me on YouTube at Enrico versus World. So E-N-R-I-C-O vs world and that's where i'll be putting out my blogging content already already well i like to always ask my guests before they leave um any word of advice any word of advice to be to anybody out there who may be watching who you know wants to take a step to be an entrepreneur you know anything that you can give them any words of encouragement or anything like that uh, my favorite mantra growing up was uh dream as if you'll live forever live as if you'll die tomorrow so, um, no, like I said, no man knows the day nor the hour. Don't just assume that you have all the time in the world. Get out there. If there's something that you want to do, apply yourself right now. Make the contacts. N network locally. Uh, network sideways, not up. So, if you <laughs> people on Instagram, reach out to somebody that you know that's a photographer. Don't jump up and try to find Beyonce's photographer, you know? Right. Okay. Work with the people in your community to move forward and you can get a lot done that way. All right, all right. Well, y'all, again, this has been another episode of My Quality is For Real. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking time out of your day, out of your Sunday um, to come on our show. Don't be a stranger. Um, anything that you have going on, you now have a have a platform to come share. So I look forward to connecting with you and building and you have a, a wonderful day. And y'all stay safe and, you know, protect your neck.
<laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. Woke up this morning to a winter wonderland in the Bronx. <laughs> yes, that's right. It is snowing. As beautiful as it looks, it is not as pleasant to be in it. But it is beautiful. And my day typically starts around 7.30. So even though I would love to sleep in, I still have to get up and get out in this mess. So let me get myself together and get on this bus. I catch one bus and then I get on a train and get off on six stops. Crazy thing is when I first started, I always used to miss my stop. So I'm Detective Avery. This is Detective Barnes. Sorry to disturb you so late in the hour. Do you know a Constance Wells? Uh, yeah. She uh, helped me get back to school. Why? You sure that's all she does for you? Several days ago, we found Miss Wells passed out in her room after taking some pills. We found this pill bottle in her possession. It has your name on it. We're just wondering how did she get it? Go back inside, baby. It's okay. Let's go back inside. So, do you mind coming with us down to the police station? This actually isn't the only bottle we found with your name on it. She has several stashed in empty drawers. Just want to ask you a few questions. Am I under arrest? You could be. If you don't come with us. No. But we could come back with a search warrant. 